G'day, I'm Mark Hoth and welcome to Swift Almanac. Today in iOS Essentials, we are covering queues and multi-threading. It's very important to understand queues and threading and that's for one main reason, you want your user interface to be responsive. In fact, the entire iOS queue scheme is designed so that your user interface is able to respond well during calls to a network or database which could be taking large amounts of time. So let's have a look at queues and threading. So let's cover some definitions and terms. Threading allows us to execute multiple functions at the same time or appear to be running them at the same time. Threads can be run where we have multiple processes, in which case each processor is executing independently, or where we have a single processor, time sharing is used to allocate time to the execution of concurrent threads. So in a single processor with say two threads, 80% of the time could be spent on one thread, say the main thread, and 20% of processing could be used with a background thread, say networking or hard drive read and writes. With multiple processes, we can also have a combination of multiple processes and time sharing to maximize the CPU processing. Video cards, for instance, will have a dedicated CPU for rendering or creating each frame, which is then passed to the main CPU for display. If you hear that something is run synchronously, that means that it's running serially, one after the other. And synchronously basically means that nothing else is getting any processor time until that task is finished. If you hear that something is running asynchronously, then that means it is running concurrently with a lot of other tasks and the user is free to do whatever they want and so is the CPU. Within the iOS system, there will be at least five queues, the main queue and four other system-defined queues. In addition, you can also create your own queues if you need to. So what is being queued? Well, that is functions or more likely closures. So these closures are queued up and run either serially, one after the other, or concurrently by forking and creating a new thread for it to be processed. The other term that you need to understand is QoS or quality of service. Something with a high quality of service is getting priority and something with a low quality of service is getting a low priority. This can be seen in networking where if you're talking via Skype, you want high quality of service, so all the video packets are serviced immediately upon arrival. Whereas all the email packets are pretty much low priority, it won't matter if you have to wait a few seconds for your email to come through. So some queues get high priority, lots of processor power, like the user interface, and others get low priority, like checking for network packets. Back in the day, you would need to download an entire movie before you could watch it. Now we have a user interface which can show the movie to us while there is a concurrent task in the background that is downloading the next frame or frames so we were able to download and view concurrently. This can be managed by the quality of service on the network but also with caching. So we might cache the next 10 seconds of video in memory which would allow for a variation in the network quality of service. Let's look at how it works in the iOS. Let's look at the code for queuing functions. It's essentially a two-step process. We need to get a copy of the queue identifier or create the queue, and then we need to send the function to be queued. So these queuing functions, it's important to note, all they're doing is putting a closure or a function into the queue. They're not actually processing it, so they run immediately and they basically go, here's something, thank you very much and I'm finished. They don't wait for the, they don't actually run the, the function themselves. That's done by the operating system. So the most important queue is the main queue. It's important because all of the user interface uh, functions have to be run uh, on the main queue, on the main thread. And so we can get a copy of that by just going let main queue equals dispatch queue dot main. Then there are four other concurrent queues that are run by the iOS and they are uh, of differing qualities of service. You can get copies of them using the syntax there. Um, and the types are dot user interactive. This is an example where a 
you need a high quality of service, it's the highest quality of service apart from the main, and this is where, uh, for instance, a user is doing something with the screen, and you want the whole image to refresh as they're moving the mouse around, um, that would be dot user interactive if you have to do some sort of calculations or something like that. Um, then you've got user initiated, so again, this is a high priority, and this is also dot default is equivalent to this, uh, and this would be, for instance, going to a website, um, you going to keep checking and checking and checking and then as soon as you get the response from the website you want to update the interface as soon as possible uh, but you don't want the system locked up so you're running that concurrently in the background while the website information is being uh, collected then there's this third type dot utility and the example is given of saving a very large file so this is something that's running for a long time in the background um, and it's slowly grinding away saving maybe um, you know, a video or something of enormous size, um, but you still want to be able to use your interface and switch in and out of the application, etc. It'll just get time when things are idle. And then you have this dot background quality of service, which would be good for something that's passive, um, such as waiting for um, updates on a network database or just some general networking code um, that's not too uh, intensive, but you need to check frequently to see whether or not something's actually happened. And then the third case is if you need to create your own queue. Uh, normally you would only create your own queue if it was a serial queue. And the reason you would do that uh, could be that say you're doing multiple things asynchronously. So you've, you're looking for information on uh, three or four databases or, or three or four database searches. Maybe you're getting some uh, information about usernames and passwords. Um, if you've got that other database that's accessing profile pics, then you might not want to return until you've both got the username user ID and password, and you've got the picture so you can display them all at once. So what you can do is you can create your own serial queue and then place those two asynchronous events within the serial queue, and then the serial queue won't return until both of the asynchronous events have occurred. Now it wouldn't matter which order they uh, returned in. So once we've got our queue identifiers, how do we um, how do we send our function to be queued? And uh, you can either use the initialization process um, or the identify process directly. So you can do it all essentially in one line, dispatch queue.main.async, and then put your code in here um, that you need to be run at the end of the, that, that you need to be run. Um, or you can use your queue identifier and then just put the dot async and place the, the queue in the main queue. Again, if you've got your one of these SQs that you want to send things to, it works exactly the same way. And the same if you've got your own MyQ um, with your own label. The, the only use of the label is to find your queue in the debugger. Um, and then what you really need to understand is that if you're not on the main queue and you need to do some UI work, then uh, essentially this is what you'll see. Um, your um, your concurrent queue is going to be running some background task and then that background task is going to return and it's going to return uh, a closure and in that closure you need to say uh, dispatch queue.main.async and that's going to switch you over to the main queue and then run your user interface your user interface tasks here on the main queue and when we look at Firebase uh, you'll see that in action. So that's it for queues. Hopefully you understand what's going on. I will point out that all of this syntax is basically new from version iOS 10.10. Uh, so it's uh, pretty much, well, in fact, it's totally up to date and uh, you should uh, be aware that previous tutorials uh, are now dated. I hope you now have a thorough understanding of queues and threading and what you need to do to ensure your code is running efficiently in the correct queue. If you have any questions about the tutorial, then please leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at Swift Almanac. Please subscribe to the channel, it's free, and check out our website at www.swiftalmanac.com. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Cheers.